Um, golly, I always want to call this guy Buster, but I know it's like Jake Johansson or something like that, or I'm not positive. David Johansson. There we go. I remembered. <laughs> Howdy, howdy, howdy. Welcome to a special Black Friday edition of Collection Connection. It was a little bit of a busy week, so I didn't have time to turn an episode around before Turkey Day yesterday. Uh, so if you are watching from the U.S., hope you had a great Thanksgiving yesterday. And uh, for everyone else, uh, I hope you had a great Thursday. <laughs> so anyway, Collection Connection. Uh, it's a game, it's just an excuse to talk about records, and I play the game with my brother, Plastic Eric, from the Plastic Soundwave Cult. He does his response every Monday, mine's usually every Thursday, uh, today notwithstanding, and uh, let's get on with it. In Eric's last video, he showed the New York Dolls self-titled eponymous debut. It is definitely one of those bands, as he was talking about, that uh, is more, I don't want to say more style than substance, but more known for their style than their songs necessarily. A band like Cramps or the Misfits or New York Dolls. You'd think of the visual of the album cover, but I don't know that I could have uh, named one of their songs, uh, despite being very familiar with that album cover. The songs were a little longer than I would have thought. Uh, listening to it. Uh, Trash was pretty good. Probably the closest thing to maybe what I was going in expecting and Personality Crisis, but it surprised me that there was a six-minute song in Frankenstein. Yeah, and so as Eric uh, tiptoed around a little bit in his video, uh, they are dressed androgynously. Uh, that was probably the most outrageous thing uh, about them in that early glam period with Mark Bolin and David Bowie and acts like that. Uh, sweet, probably. Uh, kind of toe in that line of androgyny. I would go as far as to say that at least a couple of the guys on the, on the couch there on the album cover are cross-dressing, uh, certainly with the pearls and the kind of the off-the-shoulder top. But as far as the connection goes, I'm going to tiptoe a little bit myself because I know this can be a touchy subject, and if that uh, mea culpa is not good enough for you, I apologize, but I am not trying to flare up anybody's uh, passions here. Uh, but I wanted to use as my connection the fact that they are cross-dressing on the cover of the album. And that, as far as I could tell, looking up is the non-offensive version of that activity. Um, is cross-dressing, I think maybe for a time that was considered a bad term, but apparently now it's the accepted term, non-offensive. So. I'm using it in that spirit. And I picked another album uh, where there's cross-dressing on the cover. And that is Ezra Furman's uh, Perpetual Motion People from 2015. Uh, this was an artist that I first heard of. We took a little uh, weekend, long weekend road trip into DC uh, a number of years back and while I had my kids in a little independent bookstore, the music that was playing overhead was all Ezra Furman. And so I asked who it was and they said who it was. And I followed up and I said, well, that sounds pretty good. So I bought uh, three of their albums. And I say there, let me get to that in one second. Uh, the first three, I think the only ones that were actually out at that time, there were tw two 2013 albums, Day of the Dog and uh, another one whose name I'm forgetting in the moment. And then in 2015, Perpetual Motion People. I would say, and this is another way, another place where it's uh, where I'm walking on eggshells a little bit since 2015. Actually, I think in 2021, Ezra Furman uh, has come out as a trans woman. And so technically, uh, they're she now, but I admit that I'm not so well versed in the subject that uh, I know whether that's supposed to re apply retroactively uh, to everything from before. So uh, in my head, this is still cross-dressing, even though in the future they would come out, she would come out as a trans woman. Um, but anyway, 
that's just the connection. The music itself is uh, not unlike actually the New York Dolls or some of the things that uh, we've talked about in recent weeks. Uh, throwbacky to not exactly pre-Beatles rock and roll, sort of that earliest uh, 15, 50s, 1950s iteration of rock and roll, but the 1970s uh, sort of nostalgia trip back to the 50s. Uh, things like the Grease soundtrack and um, really Rocky Horror Picture Show is mostly what it makes me think of. This sort of an amped up version of 50s rock and roll. Um, and also inspired by things like uh, Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons and uh, Dion sort of uh, tough guys on the street corner doing doo-wop kind of music. And so this has a lot of kind of, you know, modern doo-wop in it. And um, yeah, it really seems like that inspired by earliest uh, rock and roll tropes, yet with that 70s sort of uh, amped up theatricality to it. And then uh, 21st century uh, brush up with some rather uh, inspired instrumentation, uh, clarinets and things like that, uh, a lot of saxophone uh, that you don't generally see in uh, music this century. Um, so the arrangements are interesting, but it feels like a, a very um, interesting clash of everything I was talking about with a garage aesthetic. So it's not very highly polished. And um, the song that I really love, and it's the, the, the primary song that I've taken away is the opening track from this, which is Restless Year. Uh, I love Restless Year, but uh, the rest of it a, is a good listen to. Lousy Connection, which is the second song, is also a good one. Uh, Potholes even throws back a little bit from earlier than the, than the 50s. It maybe feels a little more like uh, the Squirrel Nut Zippers like something out of a musical set in the 30s or something like that. Uh, similarly, like, again, the theatricality. I'm going to try, I guess, keep this short because of the fact that I'm a day late. I'm trying to whip this out here in a very short uh, amount of time. Wish I hadn't phrased it that way. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, it's something to enjoy if you're unfamiliar. Uh, Ezra Furman the English series, uh, Sex Education, the first uh, season of that, series one, uh, was almost scored uh, tip to tail with Ed Ezra Furman songs. It caught my ear because of Restless Year, I think used early on, maybe in one of the first couple of episodes, but continued kind of through the whole season and Ezra Furman and, his, and her band, I beg your apology, uh, Ezra Furman and her band made uh, an appearance in the show playing like a school dance as the house band, as uh, some of these acts are sometimes want to do. That is uh, Ezra Furman, a uh, singer out of Chicago. And um, that's all I got. 2015, Perpetual Motion People. Look for Eric's response on Monday on the Classic Soundwave Cult. And with that, I have said my piece. I thank you for watching and bye-bye.